Uncharted The Lost Legacy marks the end of the acclaimed PlayStation series from Naughty Dog, but we can always look back to the franchise's past to determine which treasure hunting adventure tops the list. Here is our ranking of every Uncharted game. It's a buddy of mine from the old days. Hi, Marissa Chase. Nate, call me Nate. Hmm. The only Uncharted game not on Sony's home consoles is sadly the worst of the bunch. The PlayStation Vita's lack of power compared to the PS3 and PS4 really limits what the developers at Sony Bend could do in terms of replicating the explosive heavy storyline of the Uncharted games. It felt more like a tech demo as Sony wanted developers to use all the features on their new handheld. And that last boss fight is definitely the most frustrating section in all the games. Golden Abyss just felt like the lesser Uncharted. If you're gonna break your leg, Argentina's the place to do it. You know, the last time you told the story, they were from Sao Paulo. Hey, would you just let the man finish? Trust me, you don't want him to finish this story. <clears throat> For example, you can't defile an empty coffin. <clears throat> the last two games on this list are the most boring to talk about. Most fans would have these two games at the bottom but that is less of an indictment on their quality and more of a praise on how far this series evolved after Drake's Fortune. The first game was praised during the early period of the PS3 generation and was a graphical benchmark for other games to aspire to. Drake's Fortune was an excellent addition to the PS3 roster and the beginning of what Naughty Dog would become after the Jack and Daxter years. Sorry you didn't get your story. That's all right. There'll be other stories. You still owe me one. You're late. I thought you were professional. Oh, you should relax. You'll live longer. The Lost Legacy is essentially the middle part of an Uncharted game. It's great in many ways, but it doesn't do anything as well as any other game. Its writing is not as good as Uncharted 4's, its action not as good as Uncharted 3's, its pacing is not as good as Uncharted 2's, but it doesn't have a single significant negative that I can think of. Only things that I wish we had seen. The large western Ghats environment, for example. Naughty Dog played up an adventure to India, only to throw us into a generic jungle setting that could have been set anywhere in the world. Returning characters are used as simple plot devices, the chemistry between Chloe and Nadine isn't the most believable, and the ending is a little disappointing. Worth it. I hope someday you will find your way into this infernal place. Bear my cross and discover the riches of paradise. What? What do you want? The riches of paradise. It's a metaphor. And here is where it gets fun. The mainline Uncharted games don't really build upon one another. Where one excels, the other completely fails. Uncharted 4 does not buck the trend, even though it features the series' best story, and dare I say, the best story in all of gaming history. Its ability to calm things down before unveiling another huge plot revelation is incredibly impressive. The graphics defy description, the animations are far ahead of its competition, and the newly introduced mechanics feel amazing. And despite all of that, Uncharted 4 was a bigger disappointment than another game on this list. And that's because Uncharted 4's pacing is completely and utterly botched. Two hour sections filled with platforming and puzzle solving are bookended by firefights that last a minute or two. Only the last third of the game even attempts to fix this. While I understand the team at Naughty Dog have their own vision of what Uncharted is, it just blows my mind that they would so drastically change the essence at the very last game. And it's not just the pacing. There is no supernatural reveal, there is no grand city to set your eyes upon one last time as Nathan Drake. There are no iconic set pieces even. And no, the King's Bay vehicle chase does not count as an uncharted set piece. The same segment is present in every other game, and I've not heard anyone claim it was a proper uncharted set piece. But I still feel like with a few tweaks, A Thief's End could have been the best of them all. I mean, what can I say? Another lost city destroyed, and uh, we made it out alive. Barely. 
Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it was. All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night, in the dusty recesses of their minds, wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act their dream with open eyes to make it possible. This I did. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Uncharted 3's story is full of, at least, and yes I counted, 26 plot holes of significant proportion. Comparing it to Uncharted 2 and 4, Drake's deception shares the impeccable pacing of Among Thieves. It was more graphically impressive than both of those games. It shows off many more environments than both. It has two or three of the best set pieces. Uncharted 3 is a romp, flying to every continent on the planet while sinking large cruise ships before catching a plane in real time, and then fighting on the plane, and then being thrown off of it, and then getting back into it to fight some more, and then... The moment Drake is comforted by Elena, to the beginning of the last section in the Desert Storm, those few hours of gameplay and story is the best Uncharted has ever been. Uncharted 3 doesn't get the recognition it deserves, if you ignore the criminal misuse of Chloe Fraser. That was too close. It'll be okay. No, I mean the whole thing. It just isn't worth it, Nate. Let this one go. For a long while, I believed Uncharted 3 was actually the best game in the series, but only after playing through the trilogy again on PS4 did I realize how wrong Almighty. <laughs> <laughs> Uncharted 2 is simply the definition of what Uncharted is. There's not really much to say about it, except that it is quite sad that the best developers in the world have not been able to recreate it. That the game was made in something like 21 months and holds a 96 Metacritic score says all that needs to be said about Among Thieves. What's the secret, you ask? It was the only game that actually used all four of its main characters. Come on. What do you say? That you're crazy. Let's go save your bloody world. <laughs>